Proverbs chapter number 19, and I know we're in Proverbs on Sunday night, um, but there's another couple of verses that stood out to me and I thought would be helpful um, for us tonight. Proverbs chapter number 19, and we'll read together verses 20 and 21, and uh, if you can describe in one word what this book is about, it's the book of wisdom, the book of wisdom. We'll talk about the, the, this idea, the principle of wisdom tonight, if we can, in Proverbs chapter number 19, and uh, we won't use that word a ton of times, but uh, there's some different word usage that we find in, in our text, but in Proverbs 19, verses 20 and 21, the Bible says here, hear counsel and receive instruction, that thou mayest be wise in thy latter end. There are many devices in man's heart, nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord, that shall stand. Father, I pray for your help tonight. Um, Lord, I don't want to be led by or controlled by anything less than you. So, Holy Spirit, I pray for your filling and your controlling and your empowerment and your guidance tonight. And I just want to be a help to my church family tonight. Speak to us through the scriptures and whatever we need your wisdom for, whatever we need your leading for. Whatever choices we need to make or need to correct, be prepared to make. Would you speak to us about them? Make a, pur a purposeful, personal application to every heart tonight, please. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If this is an easy question, at least it was for me, um, but have you ever looked back on some of the choices you've made and you think, well, that was dumb. <laughs> Um, done that plenty of times. Uh, that happens far more often than we like to admit. Uh, sometimes, uh, if you're like me, you get in too big of a hurry. Uh, sometimes you just weren't thinking, you know. Uh, you just did what you thought was the right thing to do. You didn't stop and think about it. But hopefully, when, you make a, when we make a bad decision, we learn from it, and we decide not to do that dumb thing again, right? Um, it's better to learn by other people's mistakes, but so often we have to learn by our own mistakes. But every day, uh, even if we don't see it, but every day we're forced to make decisions. We're forced to make choices. Who, when, and if my children will ever date, you know, thankfully I've got a little while before that happens, um, especially, well, especially with Cooper. But anyways, my girls will start asking questions soon and I'll have to... Um, fix it. But uh, should we move to a new house, right? Um, sometimes we worry about those things. Should I take out this mortgage? Uh, should I say something to that person? Should I correct that issue? What should I do? Should, you know, how hard should I push, right? There's lots of decisions we have to make in our own life, in our own family, um, trying to help people, trying to just be honest with things. Um, we may try to put it off for as long as we can, but uh, we still have to make decisions. You may want to avoid criticism, you don't want people to give you a hard time, but we still have to make decisions. There's going to be obstacles, uh, and yes, there will be the occasional failure, but we still have to make choices, don't we? Sometimes it's hard. You try to, you know, just wait until the last second, but we have to make them, and our choices matter. So the issue is how do we make sure we make the right ones? We don't have to find out at the end of it whether it was right or not. You can, you can know whether you're doing the right thing beforehand, and that's the way we should live and do things purposeful um, in a way that would please the Lord. We'll talk about that tonight. But uh, more important than if everyone is happy, more, or more important than not, more important than um, will it be hard is am I making the right choice? Well, by the way, the right choice is, is it pleasing to the Lord? Uh, Proverbs, again, like you, like you told me, and we all know the Proverbs is the book of wisdom. While the entire Bible is filled with the wisdom of God and the truth of God, Proverbs, you know, if you've read it, is a book of practical wisdom um, for life. It deals with so many different issues and, so, and helps you know what to do in relationships and marriage and finances and parenting and so many different things. And the book of Proverbs is invaluable. But from the beginning of the book, we find clearly that it's a book about wisdom. I think that if I looked it up right, if I remember right, the word wisdom is found just in this book about, I think, 53 times, um, so over 50 times. And in Proverbs 1.7... What, what is the beginning of wisdom? The fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord, in Proverbs 1, 7, is the beginning of wisdom. By the way, you find that in Psalms 2 before this, but still. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Wisdom begins with wanting to please God. 
That's where wisdom starts. Wisdom begins with wanting to please God. There ought to be that healthy, not only respect, but truly fear of God, not wanting to hurt Him, not wanting to grieve Him, and not wanting to displease Him. We ought to have that healthy fear of God, wanting to honor our, our God and Savior. But wisdom, it's the ability to use the knowledge that we have to make the right choices that please God. Wisdom is the ability to use the knowledge we have to make the right choices in life so that we please the Lord. We need, the wis- we need that kind of wisdom, not just know-how, but this is what's right, and this is what's truthful, and this is what God said to do, and wisdom is knowing what's right and actually doing it. And for what's the goal? What is the purpose of making right choices? What's the purpose of knowing what's truthful? To please the Lord. Everything in your life ought to be governed by, does this please God? Right? Everything. Every decision, everything we do, does this please God? That ought to be the filter of our life. So we ought to try to please the Lord. We need God's wisdom because our decisions matter and they determine whether or not we please the Lord. Your decisions affect your family. Your decisions will affect your testimony. Your decisions will affect your ability for God to use you. Think of it this way as well. The the choices you make will determine whether or not you're painted into a corner. Sometimes we make wrong decisions and we get so complicated, so stuck that we can't fix things. You know, God can see us out eventually, but sometimes we, we limit what God can do. We limit God. We limit our choices because of bad choices we make. You ever been there? Right? You kind of get stuck. We get ourselves in trouble. So let's make sure we make the right choice. We'll look at several places throughout the book of Proverbs. Not entirely in Proverbs, but we'll look at a lot of different verses here. But in, our, in the same chapter, so go, uh, go back to verse number 8. I know it's not technically our text, but in Proverbs 19, verse number 8, it deals with this idea. He says, He that getteth wisdom loveth his own soul. He that keepeth understanding shall find good. That right there makes it seem like wisdom is very valuable, very precious. He that getteth wisdom loveth his own soul. And not in a sinful way. We understand he that loveth his life shall lose it, but I, I care about my life, what I do, who I impact, if God can use me. I, the, God has given you your life. You've got to protect it so, you can, so it can count for something. And he that getteth wisdom loveth his own soul, his being, who he is. He that keepeth understanding shall find good. Anybody want to find good in their life? You want to live a happy, joyful life? Not just pleasures of sin for a season, but a joyful life where God makes you content and you know that you have the, the, the blessing of God on you. I want that, and you do too. I can have that if I have wisdom, if I make the right choices. So back in verses 20 and 21, he says, Hear counsel and re- receive instruction that thou mayest be wise in thy latter end. Think of that phrase, in thy latter end. It says, you can do, if you do these things, you can be wise at the end of your life. You could think of it at the end of the decision you have to make. So when you, that's, I think, short term, it says thy latter end. So I think it has to do with the end of your life. When you get to the end of you, your days on earth at least, you don't have a whole lot of regrets. And that comes by at the end of the choices you make, when you make the choice and then you see the results of it, you know in that moment, I did what was right, I did what was good, things are okay. So at the end of the decision and at the end of your life, you know you did what was right. You know you did what was wise, what was pleasing to the Lord. And then he says, there are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord, that shall stand. I want that comfort and peace knowing that I did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. Don't you? Well, in in these verses, we find, of course, normally for me, we find three things. Three things. Three principles for making right choices. It's not going to be novel but we need them. So look at verse number 20, the first two words. Can you read that out loud together with me? The first two words of verse 20, ready? Hear counsel. Hear counsel. Fill your life with godly influences. That's point number one. 
Fill your life with godly influences. If I want to make the right choices, then before I get to the decision point, I need to fill my life with godly influences. I had, that's, that's a longer phrase than just hear counsel. But when we read the passage, we find there's more. But counsel is advice, it's planning, it's prudence. That's the word we don't use very much. But prudence is careful, sensible, wise, right? So good counsel, good advice. There's a po- counsel here, it's positive. But fill your life with God-honoring, biblically consistent advice. Advice. God honoring biblically consistent advice. By the way, the greatest source to find God honoring biblically consistent advice is the Bible. We'll talk about that more at the end, but uh, back up if you would look, if you don't have it memorized, Psalm 1, Psalm verse number 1, we find the contrast b- between a blessed person and a person that's not blessed of God. And has everything to do with how they view and what they do with the Bible. Psalm 1, 1, blessed is the man that walketh not in the Counsel, the advice, the leadership, the counsel of the ungodly. Nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth and see the scornful. It has everything to do with his influences. Verse number two, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. If I stay in the word of God, if I am advised, if I am influenced by God himself, the, the counselor, um, if, I, if I stay influenced by the word of God, I'll be much more likely to make wise counsel, make, make wise choices. Right? If our mind and heart is filled with God and God's Word, it will help us. Keep learning the Word of God. Keep learning, period. But recognize, and we all have to do this, we have to recognize that we do not know everything. There's certain things that we can be thankful for, that I know the Bible says this, this is clear as day, that I'm not going to budge on that, but we need to stay teachable. And I'm not saying forsake clear truths. But when we don't know, realize we don't know. If we've not learned it yet, be willing to say, I've not learned it yet. But be willing to learn and to grow and to advance. We're not there yet. That's the reason for the command in 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show thyself approved unto God. If you know everything, you don't have to study. But the command, God knows we need to do that. Study to show thyself approved unto who? Unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. My study of God's word will affect my choices. Won't it? For all of us. So I need to fill my life with not just the Word of God, but people that use the Word of God. People that actually not just use the Word of God. You know, sometimes there's preachers and teachers that just use the Bible to make their own point. But you that actually believe the Word of God and teach biblically consistent advice. I can think of people in my life that I am what I am, the, the good for my life, because, I had, because they were biblically consistent counselors, pastors, preachers, friends, that they told me, don't do this. And I didn't understand why, but I found out later, oh, it's because it was biblical. <laughs> they, they wanted to protect me, and they used the Bible and followed Bible principles. You have those people too. But fill your life with biblically consistent advice. Also, fill your life with those who seek to honor God and do right. Let's go back in Proverbs. We'll go, go to Proverbs 11. We'll bounce through 11, 12, and 13. Proverbs 11. Proverbs 11 and verse number 14 says, Where no counsel is, the people fall. So what will happen if we don't have biblically sound advice? We will fall. Where no counsel is, the people fall, but in the multitude of counselors there is safety. Look at Proverbs 12 and verse 15. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes. But he that hearkeneth, hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. Proverbs 13, verse 20. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Folks, it matters who you're listening to. Not just people that claim to be Christians, but it matters if the advice you're getting is biblically sound. It makes the difference between wisdom and foolishness. Life and destruction. But have people in your life that are mentors further down the road than you, more spiritual than you. We need people like that, that we can look up to, that we can follow. Uh, people that know more. You need them. I need them. I, 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 though I'm the pastor of this church, there's people in my life that I call, that I ask advice from, that ask, what do I do here? People that pray with me and pray for me. I need people like that. We all do. 
By the way, sometimes the counselors that we can get, and not, it ought not be exclusively this, but sometimes you find them in books, godly men and women that, that wrote things and you can study behind them and, and, and have them as counselors that way. You need more than that, but those things are helpful. There's great value in that. But it's, it's not just about, by the, by the way, asking for advice so that you'll get what you want to hear. Find people that are going to tell you the truth, whether you like it or not, whether it's convenient or not. Again, in Proverbs 19 and verse 27, so a few verses down from our text, he's, we find this serious command, cease my son, Proverbs 19, 27, cease my son to hear the instruction that causeth to err from the words of knowledge. Cease, my son, to hear the instruction that causeth to err from the words of knowledge. Levi, turn me down a little bit. It's a little bit loud back here. Stop listening to people that guide you away from God. It's not just stay away from them, but cease to hear them. It's not eat the meat, spit out the bones. Stop listening to them. That's what he says. Cease to hear. Cease, my son, to hear the instruction that causeth to err from the words of knowledge. Every now and then I'll get on a kick where I listen to Dave Ramsey more than normal, you know, financial guru. Uh, he likes to say something like this. Don't take, it, don't take financial advice from broke people. <laughs> uh, you kind of get the point, right? Similarly, and similarly, be careful taking life, and life advice from people that are const- in constant messes. Sh- sure, they can, everyone can learn by their own mistakes. I get that. I'm not saying to look down on people. I'm not saying I'm perfect, but you kind of get the point. If we're constantly ruining things, we're not, there's something we don't get. But have godly influences in your life that will help guide you in the choices you ought to make. Fill your life with godly influences. Number two, back in our text in verse 20, Proverbs 19, 20. Hear counsel, and these are going to be very similar, but they're slightly different. Hear counsel and receive instruction. Hear counsel and receive instruction. Number two, keep a teachable attitude. Keep a teachable attitude. The word instruction in here is more than just the, pay, the thing with 15 different languages that you get in your box from Ikea. Uh, instructions is, this is a negative word here. The immediate definition uh, in the, of the Hebrew word for instruction is chastisement. It's chastisement, reproof, warning, restraint. This is negative. This isn't just, you know, whatever, just do whatever you want to do. You should probably go that way. No, it's you need to fix this. (laughs) Receive correction. When people tell you, and when they're right, when the people tell you you're not going the right way, you should not go that direction. You should not be doing that. Receive it. That's passive. That's you welcome it into your life. That's hard. We don't like that. How many of you like being told that you're wrong? I hate it. <laughs> you know, we all hate being told that we're wrong, right? Um, because it means that we were probably wrong, especially when Jessica tells me I'm wrong because she's probably right. But this is something we need to be reminded of often. I don't, again, I don't know everything. There's more to learn. There's more to experience. There's things I've not yet seen, and that person may have seen it. They may be right. But take correction. That means I have to keep a humble spirit. Turn with me to James 1. You'll know probably what I'm going to read here. But in James 1, verses 5 and 6, again, he deals with wisdom. But there's something that, there's a reason why we would ask for wisdom. James 1, verse number 5. And we'll go right back to Proverbs after this. James 1, verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. They give it to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Why would you ask God for wisdom? Sometimes it's just so we don't blow it, and that's not great motivation, but it's truthful. The reason why we ask for wisdom from God is because we realize he has it, and we don't. That's good humility. We need to keep that humility. God, I think I know what to do, but I'm, I'm going I'm to ask you anyways because I want to make sure I don't displease you. I want to make sure I don't hurt something. But God, I, I, I want to do what you want me to do. Always ask God for wisdom. And why? He, he's going to give it to you. 
He gives it to all men liberally. He poureth it on top of us. That's what he does. So uh, ask God for wisdom and recognize that you need God. Keep an instructable, a corrective spirit where you're willing for God and you will allow God to change your mind. So often I'm thinking something that God's not for me. But be willing to go where God wants you to go. George Mueller, I love reading his autobiography. He says, I need, he said this about wisdom and, and counsel. He says, I need not despair because the living God is my partner. I do not have sufficient wisdom to meet these difficulties, but he is able to direct me. I can pour out my heart to God and ask him to guide and direct me and to supply me with wisdom. Then I have to believe that he will do so. I can go with good courage to my business and expect, him, I expect help from him in the next difficulty that may come before me. He said a lot better than what I'm saying. You can trust God and he will lead you. But always have a desire for God to show you more than what you see because he sees everything. Back in Proverbs. In Proverbs 10, we find more warnings about not being, not being willing, corrected, not being, having an unwillingness to be told that we're wrong. Proverbs in verse 17 says, he is in the way of life. Sorry, give you another second. Proverbs 10, 17. He is in the way of life that keepeth instruction. But he that refuseth reproof erreth. Erreth to err means you're getting off track. You're going the wrong way. If I refuse to be corrected, I'm going to go the wrong direction. Proverbs 12, verse number 1. Whoso loveth instruction, again, that's that negative correcting work. Whoso loveth instruction, loveth knowledge, but he that hateth reproof is brutish. You know what brutish means? It's stupid. If I hate reproof, I'm acting stupid. That's what God says. <laughs> Proverbs 29.1 He that being often reproved hardeneth his neck shall suddenly be destroyed and without remedy when we become stubborn we're asking for destruction accept the correction of others when they're right when it's biblically correct when the Holy Spirit tells you in your heart they're probably right allow the Holy Spirit his work in your lives by the way John 16, 13 gives us one of the ministries of the Holy Spirit how be it when he the spirit of truth has come he will guide you into all truth Sometimes the truth is you're wrong. Sometimes the truth is Carrie's not doing right. I'm not thinking right. I got a wrong attitude. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will tell us negative truths about ourselves. His reproving work. We need to be told that. Lastly, back in our text. Proverbs 19, verse 21. There are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord, that shall stand. The second verse begins with a warning for all of us. There are many devices in man's heart. There's lots of times where we think we're doing the right thing. There's lots of things that we can come up with, schemes. The devices have to do with schemings, plannings, uh, devising a plan, right? So this is what he's talking about. So people, we have that we can get the idea of this is how I'm going to do these things. And our heart, our mind, they're filled with them. But then God contrasts that with his own plan. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord of that shall stand. What kind of advice will always stand, will stand the test of time? What kind of advice is always right? Will always work how God intends? Number three, remember that God's way is always right. Remember that God's way is always right. How many of you know that's true? God's way, God's word is always right. How many of you have ever been confronted? You, you, you're doing something the Bible says is wrong or you're about to do something the Bible says is wrong, you see it, somebody shows it to you, and your first response is, yeah, but. That happens, doesn't it? But, what, but my situation's different, I promise. <laughs> no, no, no. But I'm allowed, no. The counsel of the Lord shall stand. It, it's always right. It's always firm. God's not making a mistake. God's word even applies to me. <laughs> God's way is always right. One more place, Matthew 7. The last place we'll turn to tonight, Matthew 7. 
We sang the kid, sang, song, whatever, the kid song so many times, and we know this, that we forget the importance of it. In Matthew 7, verse 24. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house. And it fell, and great was the fall of it. We know the story, but we know the verses, but do we really believe that? There's safety in just following the counsel, the leading, the commands of God. Then there's also, there's danger. And just think about this. There's the pictures in this little, I don't know if it's a parable, but this little picture here. The rock is his word. <laughs> we get that. But what falls? It's the house, the home. And not just the building, but the home. Your home is not just the building. Your, house, your home is the family. Live your life filtered by, governed by, restrained by God's word. That's limiting, yes. But you are limiting your life to safety protection, wisdom, the leadership of God himself. Limit your life by the word of God. The way we test if someone is a godly counselor is are they biblically consistent? Not just in what they say, but in their action, not just by the words they say, but in their attitude. Are they living the word of God? Is, are they spiritually sound? Is their attitude right? All of those things matter. Not just are they, you know, hateful jerks that use the Bible to hit people with, but are they biblically sound people? But make sure that the advise, advisors you're listening to, the counselors that are leading you, the, the, thing, the things that make you who you are, are biblically sound. Be willing to be corrected by those people and those things that are biblically sound. Limit your life by what is biblically sound. The way to God's blessing, the way to, to righteous wisdom is just doing what God says to do. Let God himself be the guide of your life. And by the way, listening to this message, determined to obey this message, is listening, not because I'm preaching it, because what the Bible says is just, I'm, and my choice right now and how I'm going to make choices is going to be governed by the word of God. I want, I want, and I, I'm sure you're just like me, I want to make sure the right choices. You know, Jessica, Annie Ellen Cooper de- are, are dependent on me to make sure I make the right choices for our family. Yes, they have an input, especially my wife has an input, but as the head of my home, I'm responsible to make sure I make the right choices. As pastor, you're banking on me to make sure I make the right choices. So I, we all, we're all vital of this, but we all have to make sure that our lives are filled with godly people and godly leadership. So when we get to decision points, we've had so much into us that because the word of God and biblically things and spiritual things, are, they saturate our lives so much that the right decision is just what's going to come out. But we also have the wisdom to ask God and be willing to be corrected. Again, I've made so many decisions in my life that were messed up. And when I did, it's the only reason, well, the main reason is because I was not doing what God wanted me to do. And by the way, and I'm done, if you do what God tells you to do, if you're following what the Bible clearly says, no matter who opposes you, no matter the results, if you did what God told you to do, you made the right, wise choice. No doubt about it. If you're following what the Bible says, that's all that really matters. Obey the Lord, please the Lord, and let Him take care of the rest. Fill your life with godly influences. Keep a teachable spirit, and remember that God's way is always right. Amen.